So uh, it is a uh, winter's day in Cape Town. Uh, the rain's been coming down, which is wonderful. We've needed it uh, here in the city, and uh, the skies are opening. And uh, this is yeah typical uh, winter weather in Cape Town. But um, today I'm on my way home from uh, the university, uh, having marked, finished moderating many of my undergraduate student papers and uh, giving feedback and working with some of my postgraduate students. Some are in the research proposal phase and others are already busy with their research and one or two are nearing the end and it's a wonderfully exciting time to engage with them uh, around their work. But you know, all of this has made me uh, think a little bit, what is the purpose of study and particularly of uh, theological education? For what reason do we seek to acquire knowledge of a particular kind uh, in the discipline of uh, theology. So as you may know, I'm a systematic theologian, uh, which is uh, akin in some senses to a philosopher. Uh, my discipline um, is about figuring out uh, why we believe what we believe and how we come to believe it methodologically, what sources we use and how we use them to uh, construct our beliefs. One of the things I sometimes hear from people when they think about philosophy and particularly systematic theology is that they ask the question, well, what good is that uh, for the world? What difference does it make? Um, I think about my own training when I left university. I, I knew everything about the eschatological certainty of the resurrection uh, in the uh, parousia at the end of time and could use all of these technical terms and tell you what theologians throughout the centuries had thought but I couldn't conduct a funeral uh, which was quite a problem being uh, a minister so we clearly know that there are different forms of knowledge and uh, in my training of students throughout the years particularly at seminaries uh, I was the Dean of John Wesley uh, College the seminary of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa we uh, developed some language for this. We spoke about head, heart, and hands as the different forms of knowledge that we need uh, to form a person for ministry. So head is the traditional knowledge component that has to do with the content and reasonableness of our Christian faith. Heart, that has to do with aspects such as spirituality, belief, and values. Uh, not only what we believe, but what the belief means for us and how it shapes our living in the world and what it means uh, for what we believe God uh, invites us to do in partnership with God in God's mission in the world. And then, of course, the hands aspect, um, the skill that's necessary in order to be uh, faithful to the work of ministry. And, of course, if we think about the traditional disciplines in a theological education, they tend to fall into three general categories. We have sources, which is things like uh, biblical studies, Old and New Testament studies, and of course related to that the ancillary elements of uh, the biblical languages, Greek and Hebrew, which I struggled my way through uh, in my undergraduate studies and uh, in, in my second doctoral program in, in New Testament. And then of course together with the sources we have what are known as beliefs, uh, that would be systematic theology, perhaps ethics, spirituality, uh, church or ecclesiastical history and practices, uh, what we do, uh, missiology, practical theology, pastoral counseling, uh, preaching, uh, homiletics, all of these particular elements and those relate to it. But of course together with that each of those disciplines can be either a head discipline, a heart discipline or a hands discipline. We can approach it from the perspective of knowledge or from the perspective of value or from the perspective of skill. And um, one of the, the most useful uh, ways in which I've seen people uh, dealing with these different approaches to education and knowledge and higher education, universities, seminaries, Bible colleges, uh, training institutions, is to speak of them using uh, sort of three geographical locations. Athens, Berlin and Calcutta uh, are the three locations that uh, I've heard people speaking about in uh, contemporary edu higher educational discourse. So Athens tends to represent uh, the older school of uh, the university or, or the, uh, the formation institution that forms people uh, for some form of uh, vocation through enforcing their values and 
uh, perhaps it could be related in some ways to what happens in a monastery. People need to learn certain things, they need to know certain things, but what is most important is the engagement of their value set. Uh, how they think, not only what they think matters. Berlin, on the other hand, tends to be the sort of structure of the contemporary uh, university, the knowledge component, the consistency and rigorous nature of the development of knowledge and theory around knowledge is a critical aspect and I guess in some senses what we do in the secular academy, uh, the public of the university as David Tracy would call it, uh, relates to that kind of knowledge. And then of course the third one is Calcutta and that has to do with this uh, developing world, perhaps the two-thirds world understanding. Uh, what I spoke about in an earlier vlog that happens at TEC College, Theological Education by Extension College, the development of knowledge that is intended to have a direct application for the transformation or engagement in society. Now when I think about this um, in terms of my own work, I think my I try and get my students, certainly at an undergraduate level, who are getting degrees in order to become pastors or workers in, in faith-based organizations or civil society to have that match between knowledge and value and skill. But often at uh, the graduate level, my masters and PhD students, I want them to work more on the issues of climate than I want them to work on weather, to use that metaphor. I want them to be thinking very, very deeply and rigorously around those uh, underpinning currents of knowledge that shape not only what we think, but how we think uh, about the things. You can see my uh, video where I speak about David Ford and Hans Frey's notion of theological typology, the relationship between the knowledge component, the content of our faith, and the method uh, component for more of that. So the point I guess is that um, as I think about uh, what I do in the classroom, what I do with my students in their research, how I encourage them uh, to think and work with the knowledge that they develop. I want them to have uh, a few of those elements, but I also recognize that this almost is the same as that old saying. What we try to do with people is to form them for faithful and effective living, and part of that requires very rigorous and careful thought processes. Um, there seems to be, certainly in the developing world, uh, amongst some quarters, uh, a distaste for uh, the purpose and role and place of uh, the public intellectual, the person who thinks very uh, carefully and deeply uh, about issues. And of course the reality is if we don't think very carefully and deeply about issues, we, we may just respond in a very sort of surface manner to issues that happen around us. We may just respond to the weather rather than thinking about what is the climate behind it that's bringing about these weather conditions. So the university certainly has a space within that, but it's not the only space and certainly not the most important space. That saying it takes a whole village to raise a child, I think it's the same thing. It takes a whole community and different publics in the community to raise a person uh, for effective living. The university contributes something perhaps like an engineer. Uh, the church is a very pragmatic uh, and engaged source, perhaps uh, similar to the mechanic that keeps uh, the car running. And then of course we need uh, other institutions uh, that engage in the development of spirituality, ethics and faith formation. So I'd love to hear when you think about uh, your own formation for uh, the work that you do, your response perhaps as a pastor or a minister or a, a, a professional theologian, an academic theologian, uh, what do you value most? What's most important for you in your formation for faithful uh, intellectual and practical living. Uh, maybe you're not even a, a formal theologian, maybe you're someone who's working uh, in the world of work but still wanting to be faithful to the call of your discipleship. Where do you find what you need in order to inform your faith and equip you for faithful living? So thanks for watching today's uh, video. Remember, it's uh, not a lecture, it's just a thought. And I'll add in the show notes um, a couple of uh, links to some articles that I think you may find helpful. The one uh, to the theological education by extension model, which is a justice-based model of education. I'll add uh, also a link to a wonderful article that discusses this notion of head, heart and hands and the uh, Athens, Berlin and Calcutta models of uh, theological education. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you found the video helpful, if you have uh, further insights or thoughts or maybe agree or disagree on something, why not uh, add a note, uh, add a comment in, in the uh, comment section below. I'd love to interact with you and hear your particular views 
uh, on the value or lack of value about certain forms of, of training and formation for ministry. If you like the video, please share it, subscribe and hook up with me. Uh, you can uh, find me, Digital Dion, on most of the social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Beam, uh, or on my website, DionFoster.com. So thanks for watching and uh, I hope you'll come back soon. Yeah.